ISAact.org was created to bring awareness to the general public and the legal systems around the world about serious human rights abuses utilizing remote influencing technologies. In 2011, ISAact.org, through the help of Dr. John Hall, a licensed physician in the state of Texas, developed the three-phase testing process that tested individuals who were complaining of similar type symptoms that were consistent with remote influencing technologies. Although most of these complaints were subjective, the International Center Against the Abuse of Covert Technologies set out to objectively obtain data to rule in or rule out the possibility of remote influencing technologies being the cause of these symptoms. In the following scene, you will see the actual testing of our preliminary scan, Phase 1, with a volunteer by the name of Magnus Olsen. This was conducted in Croydon, London. In the following scene, you will see phase 3 testing being conducted on Magnus Olsen, this time in a controlled environment. A Faraday cage, which was rated to block out frequencies between 9 kilohertz and 18 gigahertz. You will notice that in this controlled environment, that utilizing a frequency counter, that we are detecting frequencies from the right and left TMJs of Mr. Magnus Olsen, including a diffuse area in his frontal area. Keep in mind, the Faraday cage is rated to block out these frequencies between 9 kilohertz and 18 gigahertz. Those frequencies found being detected on the frequency counter are well within those parameters. But it is clear. Yeah, yeah, I can read it. We said uh, mid forehead. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Phase three testing was conducted in Belgium at a research facility. We had a total of sixteen participants. Of those sixteen participants. 14 were symptomatic, and two were a control group chosen at random without symptoms. In the following scene, you will notice how the control group is tested with the frequency counter, and no viable detectable frequencies are detected around their person. The first participant of the control group is tested within the Faraday cage. And notice how when we put the frequency counter near the TMJ area, the frequency counter in active mode reads zero. Uh, zero. In the next scene, you will see us testing the second participant of the non-symptomatic group, control group, within the Faraday cage.
Again, notice how the frequency counter in active mode does not detect any viable frequencies near yeah, the I participant. Yeah, yeah. Per the manufacturer documentation, the wand utilized in our frequency counters are accurate within one part per million. In the following scene, in order to make the testing more comprehensible, we place the control group non-symptomatic individual and a symptomatic individual within the Faraday cage. Notice how when we place the frequency counter next to the TMJ of the symptomatic individual, a frequency is detected. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now when we have them switch locations so that the non-symptomatic individual is in the same location as the symptomatic individual, notice now how when we place the frequency counter next to the non-symptomatic individual, there are no okay. frequencies detected. After careful evaluation of both the data and the visual evidence, we must conclude that frequencies are being detected around the areas of this symptomatic group. Bear in mind, this is non-consensual. Not one of these individuals has asked to participate in any type of experimentation or given permission to have this type of overt harassment or terrorism done to their person. Special thanks to large regard my colleague Dr. John Hall, Dr. Edward Spencer, all those who have helped this process to where it is today. For without your participation and your support, this testing process could not have been accomplished. For that, we are grateful. For a full report and details, please download the report here at our website, icaact.org. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.